Hello, this is Professor R. A. Mahindrakar from JSS Art Science and Commerce College, Gokak. So far, we have seen the morphological and anatomical adaptations in hydrophytes and xerophytes. Today, we'll be studying the epiphytic adaptations. So, what are epiphytes? Epiphytes are those autotrophic plants which grow on the surface of some other supporting plants and are not permanently rooted in the soil. That is why the name epiphytes. Epi stands for above and phyton stands for plants. These orchids you might have seen they grow on the trees like mangoes, peepal tree etc. Even when you enter an evergreen forest you will see algae, lichen and mosses are growing on some of the barks of the plants. So all these are some of the familiar examples of epiphytes. These plants absorb sufficient moisture from the atmosphere and mineral nutrition from the decaying bark of the supporting plant upon which they are situated. As they are autotrophic in nutrition, they manufacture their own food that is they synthesize carbohydrates from water and carbon dioxide in presence of sunlight these plants differ from parasites because parasites derive nutrition from the host plant whereas the epiphytes do not derive nutrition and water from the living parts of supporting plants and also they differ they differ from these lianas Linas are woody stem climbers because epiphytes in real sense are not permanently rooted in the soil. Epiphytes are classified into four types by Schimper. They are the protoepiphytes, hemiepiphytes, nest epiphytes, and tank epiphytes. So now let us see the differences between these four types of epiphytes. The first is proto-epiphyte. Proto means primitive. Now these plants derive their nutrition partly from the surface of the supporting plant and partly from the atmosphere. They do not develop any adaptive features in them except perhaps for the aerial roots with velamen tissue. The examples are this uh, Peperomia whose image is towards the right. Now this is one of the most uh, common ornamental plant. Then the second is this uh, Dischidia. Even this is an ornamental plant. So these are all some of the examples of this uh, protoepiphytes and you can grow them in the pots also. So that's why we give this name to them as the most primitive epiphytes. And even some ferns also belong to this group. The second are this uh, hemi epiphytes. These plants grow on the supporting plants in the beginning like true epiphytes. But later on, they establish connection with the soil by their roots. Examples are this climbing aroids, then this uh, syndapsis officinale, etc. Some stem climbing plants grow in the soil, but their stem dies from below upward and terminal portion live like the hemi epiphytes. Such plants are termed as pseudo epiphytes. The third is the nest epiphyte. As the name suggests, plant, epiphytic plants have appropriate device to collect large amount of water and humus for their use means here you can see in the image how the leaf are 
in a cluster just forming a nest so that during rainy season and during this uh, div whatever the moisture that is falling whatever the rain that is falling it is collected in this uh, cluster of leaves in form of a nest and even whatever the soil that flows through the wind even that is collected here so that is how uh, the plant gets its uh, requirement of water and minerals examples of this is this uh, asplenium nidus which is called as the bird's nest fern whose image has been shown here and the second is this uh, bromelaids orchid now the fourth one is this tank epiphyte these plants develop fibrous anchoring roots which do not take part in water absorption leaves that are variously modified absorb water and manufacture food example is this uh, nidularium tillandsia etc now we shall study some of the morphological features of this uh, epiphytic plants since the epiphytes depend directly for their water supply on rain atmospheric moisture snow and dew they develop certain structural adaptations for water storage and for reducing excess water loss the important features are as follows the root system in the epiphytic vascular plant is extensively developed in this case the root may be of following three types normal absorbing root which absorb water minerals and organic nutrients from the moist crevices of decaying bark of supporting plants second are the clinging roots now this clinging roots fix the epiphytic plant on the surface of the bark the third is the aerial root now these are spongy and green roots which hang downwardly in the atmosphere and absorb moisture from the air these roots can photosynthesize in light because of the presence of green color in them in some epiphytes the roots collect on the surface good amount of dust and holds water which will finally be absorbed by the root now the stem stem in epiphyte vascular plants may or may not be extensively developed some epiphyte develop succulency in their stem and become pseudo bulbous or tuberous as you can see here now this is the tuberous stem these are the roots and so you see the stem is i not extensively developed in epiphytes now let us see the leaf morphology of epiphytes the majority of epiphytes show considerable reduction in leaf number some orchids develop only a single leaf in a growing season now here you see this is a orchid which is having two leaves and this is an orchid which has only a single leaf and leaves in many may be fleshy and leathery in platycinum superbum the leaves are modified into pitches now you can see here these are the leaves which are forming a pitcher like structure and this pitcher like structure holds the water and nutrients and all the roots enter into this pitcher to collect the nutrition and water and help the plant to grow 
Another example is this Dischidia nimulana of Sundarbans. In this plant, which is belonging to the family Asclepidaceae and found growing very commonly in Sundarban forest, show a peculiar type of leaf picture. The pictures have op openings through which the adventitious roots enter inside. Now you can see these are the pictures. Into this picture, the roots branch profusely in number and they are very delicate rootlets which spread on the entire inner surface of the pitcher and form a network. The inner surface of the pitcher is coated with wax. Pitcher collects and accumulates rainwater, humus and minerals. These are absorbed by the root network. Now here you can see one of the pitcher is uh, cut open here to see the inner structure. Now if you see inside, you will be saying the network of roots which are absorbing all the nutrients there. And this plant has a symbiotic relationship with ants. And the myrmicophily, which is a sort of symbiotic association between the ants and the plant, is very common occurrence in most of this epiphytic vegetation. Sometimes ants and insects enter into the cavity of the pitcher through the hole where they will be killed and digested. The dead remains of the animals serve as nitrogen sources for the plant. Then in family Bromiaceae, some species develop spoon-like leaves in rosette. You can see in the image. These leaves collect and store rainwater, which is finally absorbed by the epidermal hair present on the concave surface of the leaf. Now, now we shall see how the epiphytes have modified their inner tissues, that is the anatomical features to conserve the water because as you know, these plants, they depend upon whatever the moisture that is collected from the air or whatever the water that is collected during the rainy season. So these epiphytes will be showing you certain xerophytic characters because they have to conserve the water. So what are those anatomical features we shall be seeing now? The first anatomical feature is they have a thick cuticle just like in xerophytes that is why the stem are where sorry the leaves are very thick and leathery and the outer surface of the leaf are shows a presence of a thick cuticle and also there is presence of these sunken stomatas the stomatas are sunken and the stomatal chamber shows presence of these trichomes so all these help in conserving the water by reducing the rate of transpiration the second anatomical peculiarity we see in epiphyte is we have these water storage cells, especially in the succulent epiphytes. The succulent epiphytes show thin walled parenchymatous tissue that store water in and help in conservation of water. Then this feature, which I'm going to tell you now, is purely found only in the orchids. That is the aerial hanging roots. They develop a characteristic greenish white thin walled massive tissue. This tissue is called velamen tissue. Now if you take a section of this hanging root, you can see here, this is the epidermis. So whatever this spongy tissue you are seeing here, this spongy tissue is the velamen tissue. It has the capacity to absorb the moisture from the air. Just like how the sponge absorbs the water when you keep a dry sponge on water. In the same manner, this velamen tissue helps in absorbing 
the moisture from the air. So this is another enlarged view of this uh, velamen tissue. So this velamen tissue is one of the most characteristic tissue present only in the epiphytic plants. So my dear students, here we conclude this topic on epiphytes. Hope you have understood it. And thank you for your time. And please take care of your health. Wear masks. Maintain social distance. Use hand sanitizer. Whenever you come from outside, enter the home. Wash your hands with the soap. And take care of your family members also. Thank you.